everybody. Today I'm going to talk about how I did the illustration for my African wild dog anatomy poster. I'll just be focusing on the muscular diagram in the middle, which was done with colored pencil. The sketches and text were added later in Photoshop. I was inspired by my latest trip to Zoo Berlin. I finally got some decent photos of the African wild dogs. Normally they elude me. They're very often sleeping, especially after their lunch. This side view photo became my main reference for the anatomy diagram. I used Faber-Castell polychromos colored pencils. I used six different colors. I have them listed on the left here. For sketching and drawing, I used my handy HB pencil and I also used a mechanical pencil filled with 2B leads just for details and darker lines. I start off just lightly sketching in with my HB pencil. I'm focusing on the main shapes of the animal that I see in the photo. I'm using the photo to inform the pose and then later I'm going to draw in the anatomy over the top. I do it this way because I want a lifelike pose for my diagram figure. If you're doing this type of illustration straight from a skeleton as your main reference, the pose could end up being a little bit stiff or maybe even inaccurate because sometimes skeletons are not mounted as the animal would stand in real life. That's why when I'm drawing the internal anatomy of an animal, I'm always looking very closely at photos of live animals. African wild dogs are a really good animal for artists to study because their fur is very thin and you can actually see many of the muscles moving and flexing beneath the skin as they run. Now I'm starting to add in the first bit of colour. The areas of white pencil represent pearly white fibrous tissue or sinew and tendons. I am going to strengthen these white areas later on. For now I'm just slowly building up layers of colour, starting off with a light warm red and then adding a few touches of white for a bit of a creamy highlight and then as I go along I start to introduce some darker shades of red. Coloured pencils always have to be carefully built up in layers. Each layer needs to be quite light and soft, otherwise the paper quickly becomes overburdened and you'll find that it just can't pick up any more colour variations. It's much better to build up a pencil artwork with many soft layers of different colours rather than go in too heavy with just one colour, otherwise your end result may look very flat. I'm often asked how I find reference material for this kind of anatomical illustration, and by that I mean photos and diagrams of animal musculature. There are many books on this subject, they're often used by veterinarians and surgeons. There are some animal anatomy books that are more targeted at artists. Whenever you have the opportunity, it's good to collect these books or make photocopies. Check in libraries, secondhand bookstores, and also eBay. You might find many of these books quite cheap secondhand. And then, of course, there's good old Google search. You might find something there. Most importantly, you need to work from a variety of sources. Don't just use one diagram to copy the muscles, because if there is an error there, you're only going to duplicate it. You need to cross-reference between different diagrams, photographs, video footage, and then there are some species for which you will just never find anatomical diagrams for. They're just too obscure, too rare, which was the case for this African wild dog. In that situation, you need to look at very closely related species. So for example, for the African wild dog, I look at wolves and domestic dogs, and I really compare photos of these animals in life and try to establish what are the similarities and differences between them. For the most part, the types of muscles and the arrangement of the muscles will be the same. It's just the proportions that will differ. As diverse and unique species are, they are still remarkably similar beneath the skin. All the major muscles on a dog are also found in humans, only just very different size and shape but it's still important to pay attention to detail. Otherwise, you might miss some important differences between closely related species. For example, did you notice that this African wild dog does not have dew claws, unlike most domestic dogs? They have only four toes on each foot. The two middle toe pads are also partly fused together. I would never have known this unless I'd read about it. So that's why it's very important to do your research as well as looking at visual resources. 
So as I come to the end of this illustration, I'm adding in darker touches with blue. I think blue is a really nice color to use for shadows. I also use blue to define the edges of things sometimes. I just find that it's less flat than black. I try to use black very sparingly. But I did use black here just for the final outlines and little details. And I also went over the white areas again with the white pencil. I also used a little bit of brown for dark shadows because muscles often do have a brownish tinge. And I also added a little bit of red to those white tissue areas just to help them look a bit more natural. So that was my colored pencil illustration. The next stage was to photograph it and cut it out digitally and assemble it with text in Photoshop, along with a few other graphite sketches. This poster is available to download from my Patreon at the $10 level. It's a digital image file, then you can download it and print it out up to A2 size, which is a huge poster. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Please let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next from my channel. Until next time, happy drawing!